Good evening and welcome. I'm Marsha Ball coming to you from Austin, Texas. Tonight, I'm pleased to be your host for two plus hours of high powered boogie woogie and blues piano performed live on stream by a collection of some of the world's greatest piano players. Presented by Arches Piano Stage and the Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame. Music historians uh, generally agree, if they generally agree, that Boogie Woogie began in America. And while it might be derived from the blues, it's distinctive because of its uh, driving left hand rhythms and right hand virtuosity. It's upbeat, it's complex, and it's irresistible. Arches Piano Stage, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, has been a leading proponent and supporter of Boogie Woogie for over 30 years with its live annual outdoor shows. And tonight, the organization is presenting its first live stream musical event with nine world-class Boogie Woogie piano artists. So throughout the show, viewers will have the opportunity to donate to a prominent and worthy cause, the World Food Program, associated with the United Nations and a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2020. In addition to the live performances, tonight the Arches Piano Stage will also honor two great Boogie Woogie artists that have made significant contributions to that unique musical style. John Paul Amaro of France and Mead Lux Lewis of the USA will be inducted into the Arches Piano Stage Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame. So thank you for joining us tonight for what I promise will be a rollicking good time, whatever rollicking is, it's what the press always calls me. And I get to kick the show off with a song by a Texas Seaport piano player named Rob Cooper. Uh, it was recorded in 1935, and I've always wanted to play this song, so I learned it especially for tonight. It's called The West Dallas Drag, and it goes something like this. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to turn these off. I've got uh, somebody talking to me in my phone. Pardon me, y'all. Okay. I'm going to do a song that I wrote about a place down in South Louisiana near where I grew up. It's called Sparkle Paradise. <laughs> side down among the trees you could hear that music on the Louisiana breeze and the lights were shining out through the night it was heaven sparkle paradise well 
It sounded like angels singing to me. Oh, well, I was just a girl, maybe 17. So I'm a little bit concerned about public domain, and they said, do what you wrote or something really, really old. <laughs> I've already done something really old. I'm going to do this song that I wrote, and it's pretty old, too. It's, uh, it's called Eugene, and it's a true story about a friend of mine down here, Big Ricky, the Wacamole Queen. At the rebel driving on a family night There you sat all by yourself and honey so did I I just had to ask you where you've been all my life Eugene, honey come on home Eugene, I'm so tired of being all alone You know I've been good and I can be Ever since you've been gone Well we had a fight the other night a little of a spat Known you'd act like that. You know I love you, baby. Come on back, Eugene. Honey, come. 
do one more little number and then we can get to the meat of the show up here so this next one is a uh, another boogie that i wrote and it's um almost a true story too it's called right back in it again johnny little was an outlaw with a price on his head he shot a man in cold blood and left him for dead. They took him down to Huntsville, that's in Texas, y'all, put him in the pen. They said, you're doing your time, you got to make amends. He said, I'm through with crime, I'm a different man. But when it finished, he was right back in it again. She was a beautiful girl with expensive taste. She dated movie stars, yes, and heads of state. She was a little bit shallow, a big hit with men. She said, I hate this life, I'm going to change my luck. She bought a lottery ticket for a million bucks and didn't win it. So she was right back in it again. You can't fight it, you know you're right back in it 
it again. All right. So don't forget, we're playing for tips. And your contribution goes to the United Nations World Food Program. The WFP has been on the front lines of the world's hunger crisis since 1962. Right now, they are taking on the largest scale up ever, uh, providing life-saving meals to over 138 million people in more than 80 countries. So please go to archespianostage.com and donate to the World Food Program. And thank you. So... Starting us off tonight, the great Ricky Nye from right there in Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey, Ricky. Ricky's been performing for over 35 years. He's a veteran of um, the Arches live shows, many of the Arches live shows, and he tours internationally. He plays with the cream of the international boogie woogie crop. He produces his own events, and he's in the Arches Piano Stage Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame. So, hey. Hi. I must say, if you... Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, now I could just hear you, but I couldn't hear you before. Okay. There, now I can hear you. Well, I just said all the nicest stuff about you. So, <laughs> and, uh, but you can, you can recap and, um, I, but I would like to know just how the boogie woogie bug bite you. Um, I've been playing music since I was five years old and I, I was way, way into it at a very early age. But uh, my introduction to tra traditional boogie woogie was in 1996. So um, I was invited by Dr. Philip Lemming to play the stage after we met at a New Year's Day party uh, prior, months prior. And um, I, uh, and notably, uh, the gentleman who's going to be playing after me, Carl Sonny Leyland, is the guy that I heard who really flipped the switch for me, made me want to... Uh, delve into this, because I had little bits and pieces of it in my playing, a boogie woogie, but I wanted to um, pay respect to, to the tradition, and um, so I just, it was through my introduction at the Arches Boogie Piano Stage that set me down that road. Very cool. And you produce shows. I did, uh, for 18 years, I did something called the Blues and Boogie Piano Summit. I did it in Newport, Kentucky, at the Southgate House with myself and three other pianists, and the rhythm section uh, recorded it from the second year through the 13th year. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, it was uh, it was a labor of love, I should say. And uh, <laughs> I put it together myself and uh, a way for me to bring. And I, through doing this, I established exchange programs with European players where, you know, in Europe, Boogie Woogie is a viable art form. Uh, so, you know, that that. Uh, yeah, so I did do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, would you play? I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. Well, All right. You can't wait. Fun. Ladies and All gentlemen, right. Ricky Nye. Thank you, Marcia. It's an honor to be on the set with you here. So, uh, start off with something of mine. Uh, it's called Lord, Lord, Lord. It's not a church tune, I can tell you that. So, here we go. Thank you. 
happened every day. And I told, yes, I told you, please don't take all my pain. inspired by a pianist who used to play the Arches stage, the late great Charlie Booty. Uh, he used to fly small planes, and at some point had crashed a plane. And he developed short-term amnesia, um, had to relearn how to do a lot of things, you know. And I said, well, gosh, Charlie, I says, do you still fly? He says, no, so I keep it low and slow. So I thought that was a good title. So uh, anyway, here we go. Cincinnati, Ohio, the home of King Records. Okay, let's see. We have some kind of a plan. All right. <clears throat> uh, you see, uh, I'll do a tune of mine. Uh, 
it's kind of a, a New Orleans kind of bag. And um, and I got inspired to write this tune by um, a friend of mine I hadn't seen in a while, came to see me play many years ago. And I, and I says, his name is Eddie. Eddie, man, how's it going? How you doing, me? He says, oh, I'm just trying to feed that bulldog. I says, what are you talking about? <laughs> he says, he said, I'm trying to make a living, you know, to get enough money to feed the dog out in the yard, you know. So then I was doing the dishes one day. I says, I came up with this tune. So it's called Feed the Dog. <laughs> Tune it over to the great Carl Sonny Leyland. And uh, I'll finish with a, this is a boogie of mine. Um, made this up. There used to be an event in Cincinnati called Tall Stacks. They'd bring all these big ships all uh, on the Ohio River and it'd be a five day music festival. Uh, Marsha Ball, I believe you played it one year, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, anyway, so. Generally, when these things would come around, I get booked to play on one of the ships for day cruises and, and you know, this and that. So one, one year I worked on the Creole Queen, both New Orleans, and uh, the whole cast of characters came up with the with the ship to work on it, and we just had a ball for a whole week. And this is a, a memory of that time. Uh, I'd also like to say, say quickly, uh, thank you so much to Dr. Philip Lemming for entrusting in me uh, and uh, initially booking me uh, years ago. And making me a part of the uh, part of the Archer stage family, I, it's uh, um, eternally grateful. So here we go. Here's the Creole boogie. <laughs> 
smiling face <laughs> that was great ricky well, actually, thank, thank you, you. thank you so much all right well next up we have carl sonny leyland as ricky has told you uh carl grew up on the south coast of of england of great britain we've crossed paths in austin and in new orleans and now sonny lives in california so um we're going to get him up here to tell us how that boogie woogie journey began. And, um, but meanwhile, I want to tell you a fun fact. Um, here we are. Here he is. Good. Hello. Hi there. Can you hear so, me? I can. Oh, I God, can. I'm so relieved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, yeah, this is great. This is a whole experiment in, in technical um, efficiency because these are live broadcasts that we're not trying, we didn't send in a, a videotape, which is what I've been doing. So it's it's pretty tricky, but uh, it's working and it's worth it because we really get to hear you and you can introduce your songs and everything. Right. But I'm curious, um, I have two questions. And one is, um, I'd like to know how your boogie woogie journey began. Well, uh, as a kid, uh, I never liked any contemporary music. Uh, the first thing I liked was the 50s rock and roll. And uh, I wasn't playing the piano at that point, but I, I like to think that's how I got the 12-bar blues into my head because I listened to so much Little Richard and Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis. And then when I was getting to be about 15, a friend of mine at school was playing the piano and uh, one day... He was trying to make this boogie woogie left hand, something like that. And, I, and it really caught my ear and I wanted to know about it. And um, 
it turned out my dad actually knew quite a bit. He'd been in World War II and, and lived in a part of the country where black GIs were stationed. And uh, he'd gone to a pub where these fellows hung out and actually heard a guy playing blues and boogie. And, of course, that music was really popular in the mainstream at that time. Uh, you know, groups like the Will Bradley Band with Freddie Slack on piano. But he knew about Albert Ammons and Pete Johnson and Jimmy Yancey and uh, folks like that. And so uh, we started buying records. And I was just trying to get going on the piano at school. And then we got a piano in the house. I think we paid 35 pounds for it, but it was actually perfectly adequate for me at that stage and you know before long I got into a blues band and the the rest is history not 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 famous history but uh, history <laughs> nevertheless it's going to be history <laughs> it will yeah, be history right. so I had one other little thing I ran into you one time in an antique store in Austin and you had a stack of 78s and you yeah. knew like you just did not just the band, you knew who was playing in the band. You knew the piano players. I had looked at those records earlier and they didn't mean anything to me. You had I stood there and told me everything about them. So do you have a still have a huge record collection? I do. And by the way, I do remember that meeting distinctly. <laughs> uh, but yes, I do. I have a wall of uh, vinyl and shellac, which is what 78s are made out of. I also have a lot of CDs. But yeah, I, I've got the bug for, for buying them and I still, you know, perhaps waste a lot of money. One could say invest, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's an investment. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So one man's treasure. Um, I, okay. Can we hear some of your great playing? Well, absolutely. Uh, I will start out with one that I composed myself. Uh, I did record it in a duet with Luis Coloma. Uh, I've yet to record a solo version of it. I guess this will have to do. It's called Rolling Tumbleweeds. It's a boogie woogie in 5-4 time.
Once again, rolling tumbleweeds, alternately known as Dance of the Tumbleweeds, uh, a boogie woogie in 5 4. That was key of C. Let's see how I do in D flat now and eventually D natural for Leyland's Boogie. Right, once again, Leyland's Boogie. Just an improvisation, really, but uh, trying to get some of my own ideas coming through. Uh, I'm limited to one mic today. We've tried uh, fiendishly to, to get more than one mic running, and nobody can figure it out. So I'm going to try and put this halfway between uh, my mouth and the piano and, and sing something for you. About there. <laughs> Look here, woman, get away from me. Waving round your biscuit, trying to dip it in my tea. But I don't love you anymore. And I'm tired of this mess. Oh, but the truth is, baby, I don't love you any less. Well, I wouldn't give you a pickle, not even for a nickel. 
don't come round here itching, I won't give you a trickle, cause I don't love you anymore. And I'm tired of this mess. Oh, still the truth is, baby, who I don't love you any less. pet your kitty even though I know it's pretty you can furry your brow talk about how it's a pity I don't love you anymore yes yeah, still I must confess because the truth is baby oh I don't love you any less Don't you look at me, come hither. I ain't gonna pluck your zither. You can put that thing away. Save it for the rainy weather. I don't love you anymore. Yes, and I'm tired of this mess. Oh, but the truth is, baby, I don't love you any less. All right. I don't know how I'm doing on time. I was running a, a stopwatch on my iPhone here, but you know, the screen has gone dark and it'll probably take, take me five minutes to put my thumbprint in there and get it going again. So <laughs> let's assume I've got time for one more, one more quick one, just, just an improvisation. Leyland's B flat boogie.
<laughs> and to put your mind at rest, the balance when you sang and played was really good. It worked out great. Oh, wonderful. Your I mic really... was in the perfect position. Well, and that I Don't Love You Any Less reminded me of Albert Ammons. Did you, were you quoting those little twills and stuff? Actually, like no, it's just... Uh just what came out, but you know how it is when you've listened to so much of these guys, it's <laughs> bound, to, bound to filter through. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much. Carl, Sonny, Leyland. Thank you, Marsha. I'm yeah. honored and just tickled to be a part of it. Isn't it great? Me too. <laughs> um, okay. Well, our next artist is performing from his home in France. Nirek Mokar is a gifted young piano player who started out in the wonderful blues and boogie woogie scene in Paris. And he studied with the great European players and he immersed himself in the traditions um, on CDs, on YouTube and everything he could catch live. And he's, if my math is right, I think he's really, he's still 18 right now. So uh, he's um, called the boogie kid. And he's a wonderfully powerful all-around player, but his left hand kills me. So I'm hoping we're ready to queue up. And he's and this is recorded. This is pre-recorded because of two things. They're in lockdown, so he's um, in a lockdown situation, and um, there's a time difference. So if he weren't do if he were doing this live right now, it would be uh, in something like. Um, four o'clock in the morning, so three o'clock in the morning. So. so here he goes. Hi, everybody. I hope you are well. Now let's boogie woogie. <laughs> Thank you. 
hope you like it. Hello from Paris. And now, the Archer's Boogie. Thank you. 
Thank you. My name is Nirek Mukar from Paris. I hope to see you. And he said Nirek, and I had been looking all over to try to make sure I said his name right. Ah, kids today, huh? And he speaks beautiful French, too, <laughs> as well. All right. Well, that was wonderful. The future of Boogie Woogie. So it's uh, time to mention again why we're here and who we're trying to help. And that's the United Nations World Food Program. They deliver over 4 million tons of food to nearly 138 million people every year, and they respond to confl conflict, climate shocks, pandemics, and other disasters. You can go to archespianostage.com to donate. And thank you. So one of the best things about getting to do this is that I get to visit with friends who I haven't seen in way too long. And uh, one of those is Eden Brent. She's one of my favorite people, one of my favorite entertainers. She's a songwriter, a very versatile piano player with a repertoire that goes from, I um, might be stretching it here, Bach to body. I know about the body part. And she's a great and soulful singer. She's won Blues Music Awards and she's been featured in several films and she's here right now. So I'm curious with all your musical influences, how did you come to be playing Boogie Woogie? Well, uh, you know, I always <laughs> wanted to be a musician. Uh, I grew up playing my grandmother. I, th I think uh, I heard you say the other day that your grandmother played and my grandmother also played, so the first notes that I played on piano, my grandmother taught me, Middle C, and uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, and like that, and uh, always wanted to play, and then some years later as a teen, of course, I listened to a lot of rock and roll, and there's a lot of blues in there, and some boogie, <laughs> and then I, I met a piano player named Boogaloo Ames, who lived here in my town in Greenville, Mississippi, and you know, he played parties and lounges, you know, well, not, I, I didn't go to too many lounges, but restaurant lounges, just uh, so many events that I'd go to, or if my family and I went out to eat to celebrate, Boogaloo might be playing, and I used to go and hear him play, and finally, one day I got bold enough to ask him if he'd teach me, and he said, I will, <laughs> and so uh, he's the one who really, you know, I, I think uh, I, it, I have been reminded of it watching this program tonight uh, that Boogie Woogie is the sort of music that makes everybody smile. Everybody wants to tap their foot and makes everybody feel good. And so Boogaloo really put the joy of playing in, in my fingers and he taught me how to play this right here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Boogaloo. Boogaloo Ames. Boogaloo sitting right here. Right here, giving me my inspiration for this evening. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and thanks for having me tonight. It's given me a, a good feeling to get dressed up and have no place to go. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do one that I, I wrote here to slow it down a little bit. can't remember the last time you smiled. We haven't made love in such a long, long while. And baby, if it's over, oh, oh, oh you better move on. But when you leave me, leave me alone. So many nights spent by your side. So many more without you. I've cried It ain't right Oh, oh You're doing me wrong So baby, when you leave me Leave me alone and learning how to cook. And spending some time with my 17-year-old dog. Who's in there barking now? I don't know if y'all can hear that. <laughs> Let me 
He's brought some hard times to a lot of people. And I feel really blessed and lucky that even though I don't have any gigs, <laughs> I hadn't been going hungry. So I'm glad y'all are tuning in and I hope you'll find a few dollars to donate tonight. Well, it was early in the morning. Got a call from Mama Bob. He said, man, I got some bad news. You no longer have a job. Got the Washington County. <laughs> look, look who came to pay us a visit there. <laughs> Matt, you done shut down blues. Money, you want to sing, baby? Mississippi Flatland Blues. I went out to Boeing. I thought I'd be flying high. But they shut down and sold the pause and they left me high and dry. I got a job at Blassie, but pickles in a jar. Then GMS came and they took away my car. Got the Washington County. Shut down blues. There ain't no good news. Got these Mississippi flatland blues.
Thank you, Eva. Glad to see you. Glad to hear you. Let's stay up all night again. Let's stay up all night again sometime soon, okay? Let's do it. Okay. You sounded great. Good to see you. Thank you. You Thanks, too. Everybody. And I love your dog. Well, this brings us to a very special moment in our program. I have the pleasure of introducing to you the co-founder of the Arches Piano Stage, Dr. Phil Lemming. And he is going to tell you about the Arches Piano Stage Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame and present this year's inductees. So if we're ready, and we are, please welcome Dr. Phil Lemming. Hey there, everybody. Doesn't it just make you want to go buy a piano and start playing? So the, uh, the Arches Piano Stage uh, uh, originated back in 1992. Uh, it actually started with a introduction with Big Joe Duskin that I had at a uh, Blues Society meeting at the uh, Mansion Health Tavern back in the early 80s. And we struck up a friendship and uh, the rest was history. Uh, Big Joe Duskin, uh, another famous piano player in Cincinnati, uh, Tom Dooley, and Ann Rabson, uh, three piano players, uh, and along with uh, Dr. Rob Cody and myself, uh, decided to start a, pay, a stage uh, to emphasize the importance of acoustic boogie, uh, woogie piano. And since then, uh, we've been doing this year, 30 years, and we've uh, interacted with musicians all over the world. We found that uh, we wanted to honor the musicians that had uh, con committed their lives to boogie, boogie piano and, and acoustic piano and, and started the uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, and since we've had uh, many players, many of which you're playing tonight uh, as part of that Hall of Fame. The triumphant uh, of Boogie Piano is uh, Albert Ammons, uh, Pete Johnson, and Mead Lux Lewis. We have the opportunity uh, to uh, bring uh, Mead Lux Lewis in posthumously to the Hall of Fame tonight. And uh, our current uh, living uh Hall of Fame member is Jean-Paul Amru from Paris, who uh, was not able to be live on the uh, uh, show tonight. But by background, Jean-Paul is one of the most revered boogie players in the world. Uh, he is uh, known by virtually all uh, players. He's also one of the few boogie players that also uh, directed a big band. Uh, he's put out over 40 CDs and is clearly one of the icons and a, uh, an honoree of uh, this year's uh, Hall of Fame uh, by all. And he's voted in by his peers around the world as uh, one of the most worthy boogie piano players uh, that exist. In addition, we are bringing in uh, Mead Lux Lewis. And as part of that, we were able to uh, contact one of his living relatives, Denise Buckner, uh, who lives in Minnesota and is, uh, works as a nurse. Uh, this is his uh, great niece. And we had the opportunity to do an absolutely fascinating interview with, uh, with Denise. And she had some great stories. And uh, we did this. And it's a recorded interview, which uh, I think you'll love. And after this, uh, we move on to ongoing boogie piano and i hope that everybody has enjoyed this uh we all are supporting it and uh, please consider donating to the world food program which is our co-sponsor and certainly worthy of everyone's support uh we'll move on to the uh the interview I know I'm live. Uh, you're going to put the interview on with um, Meet Lux Lewis's niece? Or no? No? Yeah, okay. Then, the, here we go. Here we go. Thank for you. The Arches Piano, Piano Stage, Stage uh, Hall of Fame uh, uh, is the family of Meet Lux Lewis. Lewis uh, in, this is the grandniece of uh, Meet Lux Lewis, uh, Denise Buckner. 
Uh, Denise, thank you so much uh, for you and your family to participate in our uh, awards. And uh, tell us a little bit about your uncle. Well, he was um, he was one of the best uncles I can honestly say that we've ever had. Um, whenever he'd come to Minnesota, we were so excited. He'd always come in a very nice, luxurious car, usually a um, convertible. He'd come in the summer, and um, it was just a pleasure to have him. When he'd come, my mother would be so happy. He'd bring her gifts. He'd bring us gifts. It was just really a nice time. And because we had an upright piano in our house, we knew that eventually that was going to be played by my uncle. So when he came, it was just a it was just a real fun time to have him uh, be at our home. So here here's my here's my uncle, me, his brother, Julius, and this is my grandfather. Since you're born into a family of boogie players in uh, in in history. What does boogie piano uh, mean to you and your family? Well, I think to, to, to my mom, I think it was really, a, um, I don't know, I, I, I guess that she really appreciated the, the music perhaps even more than her children did. For me, listening to uh, some of his uh, music, I really had to really think about what that music was and why he enjoyed playing it. I remember when he would come to our house and we had that upright piano he would tear those keys up and and just looking at him play that piano um i could tell that he was super involved in it so looking at him playing that piano he would always start playing and his fingers would be moving so fast on the key and then he'd let out a groan like mm, and it would be like well i wonder what that's all about but i could understand now looking back how he really enjoyed playing that piano for me i have to really sit down and i have to think i know the 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 um the boogie woogie train song that he that he's uh most famous for um that um music when i listen to it i hear that train and i remember um him saying that he lived next to the railroad tracks and so I could I could just imagine him sitting there listening to that train and then you know uh making that music sound this same. So for me, I look at him and I think what this music means to me is whatever it meant to him, I guess I have to absorb, absorb that. Well, we're, we're so appreciative of you taking the time to uh, pass on the living extension of Mead Lex Lewis and mm. to allow our audience to see uh, a living continuation uh, and we're so happy to have induct Mead Lux into the uh, Boogie Arches Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame here in Cincinnati. And thank you again. Oh, you're welcome. It was nice being with you. Well, I guess we're ready uh, to move on to the, uh, the next artist and Marsh is gonna introduce it. And uh, again, uh, thank everybody. All right. Thank you. I was actually just texting to the producers to find out if the um, link, if, if this show is going to be archived and so that you can watch it again at a later date. And they say yes, and that they're going to share the link tomorrow. Find out whether it was at archespianostage.com, as is everything else. And I will find that out in a minute. But meanwhile, here comes another one of my piano playing buddies. Kevin McKendry. Ah, well, honestly, I've got history with a lot of these folks because uh, we musicians tend to mingle. But I've known Kevin since he played with Leroy Parnell and then Delbert McClinton back in the 1900s. <laughs> so more recently, Kevin has co-produced Delbert's Tall, Dark, and Handsome record, and they won a Grammy in 2020. And they looked fabulous. So congratulations and hello, Kevin. Where are you tonight? I'm in my studio tonight in Franklin, Tennessee. In Nashville. Yep. Cool. That's right. All right. Well, I've heard you play a lot of styles of piano, but you really rock the boogie woogie. So um, how did that get in your blood? Well, my grandfather played the piano and... Um, he played a lot of boogie, and, and uh, when I was about three years old, the first thing he taught me to play was uh, 
the left hand of a, a boogie and uh, although I took my hands were too small to play it so I took both of my hands to do it but uh, that's really where it started the very beginning of my playing was was boogie all First right yeah and then yeah you're gonna show us some stuff sure let's do it <laughs> okay. All right, this first one I'm going to do, uh, in fact, most of these that I'm going to do are from my uh, my album called Hammers and Strings. Um, this first one is called Gone Awry. <laughs> Next one I'm going to do, uh, it's kind of an acquired taste, I think, for some people. First time I ever played it for Delbert McClinton, he said, uh, oh man, that's hard to listen to. <laughs> I hope you don't feel the same way. This is called Henry's Dead, and it's a minor key boogie. Thank you. 
this next one I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up my son, Yates, and he's going to do a little four-handed thing. This is called Boogie 427. All right. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Uh -huh. So uh, this next one I'm going to do, it's not really a boogie, uh, it's, it's a blues though, and uh, I just kind of came up with it for, for this program here. So I guess we'll call it uh, Blues for the Arches.
loose for the arches. Uh, I think I have time to do one more. Um, and this one is uh, it's one we used to do back with Leroy Parnell that we wrote, and it's called uh, Mama Screw Your Wig on Tight. And we were actually nominated for a Grammy for it uh, in 1997 um, for Best Country Instrumental. <laughs> See how country you think this is. <laughs> music don't you <laughs> i love that country music <laughs> now that is yates mckenzie's dad mckendry's dad that's kevin right, mckendry that's who I am now these days i'm yates mckendry's dad <laughs> well, that, that's so great mama screw your wig on tight thank you kevin so thank much you, Marcia. all right and kevin's got his his pandemic beard going and and i was going to mention that um if you want to hide your pandemic beard or any other little flaws in life, you can get yourself a mask. And I think most of us are wearing them a lot. And I have a rock and roll um, idea that my sound man came up with. He came in one day and he had this lanyard from, oh, I don't know what, one of the blues cruises or a rock and roll event or someplace that we managed to get backstage. Everybody's got some. And he just clipped his mask on like that and so you walk around, you don't have to worry about putting it in your pocket or anything. So that's just uh, our little uh, public service interlude. So I'm going to go all um, literary on you for a minute and talk about Boogie Woogie as a, an American heartland music and that started up in East Texas, actually, and it spread along the rivers and the railroads and through the lumber camps and uh, the oil patch and went all the way to Carnegie Hall. So our next artist, Chase Garrett, is a heartland kind of a guy from Iowa City, Iowa, who now lives in St. Louis. He's a player, he's a teacher, he's a promoter of terrific boogie woogie shows. Welcome, Chase Garrett. Glad to be here. You Thank you for so you want to give you a personal round of applause for all you've been doing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'd like to hear how you started, but I'd also like to hear about your boogie woogie stomp. It sounds fabulous. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, I, I actually got started in this music because of uh, one of our good friends, Mr. Ricky Nye. And Ricky Nye uh, was a huge influence on me when I was younger. Uh, when I was about 15 years old, my dad bought a CD of his from one of his uh, Boogie Woogie Summits, uh, the fifth Boogie Woogie Summit with Barrelhouse Chuck and Ann Rapson uh, and Charlie Booty. And I absolutely loved it. And 
um, we got to connect because of that. And um, because of his summit, I actually got invited to play at the Cincy Blues Festival, where this wonderful event, the Arches Stage, has been for, for many, many, many years. And uh, because of that, I got to meet incredible boogie players like Carl Sonny Leland, um, Luis Coloma, Rob Rio, uh, Eden Brent, and a bunch of the other players that are actually on this festival tonight. So, um, yeah, it's actually because of Ricky that, that I'm here today. So I want to give a, a huge thank to him, a huge thanks for him, too. Um, and my festival, the, the Piano Stomp, was kind of based off of his piano summit that he had for a number of years. And uh, that was held in Iowa City, Iowa for about eight years. Um, and I had a bunch of the a bunch of the folks that are on here uh, there as well. And because of that, I got to tour the world and uh, meet Nirik Mokar actually in Paris and play with him a few times there and uh, travel all over the place. So uh, Boogie Woogie has been very good to me. And uh, yeah, I'm just incredibly thankful to, uh, to have this in my life and to be here with you all tonight. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Well, would you stomp a little? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, this first tune I'm going to play for you is a tune that I just have been writing. Uh, it's not even quite finished yet, but I, I have a, I have a good start to it. I'm super excited. So I'm just, I just want to get it out there to everybody. So this is a tune I'm writing called I Was Wrong and You Were Right. Here we go. <laughs> tune for you called uh, I Was Wrong and You Were Right. I'd like to do another original right now. Um, break it down a little bit and do some slow stuff for you. Uh, those of you who know me know I love, love, love my blues. And here's a tune I wrote a couple years ago. And this is uh, it's called Sailor Man. Uh, 
yeah, I just love this tune, Sailor Man. So here we go.
little blues for you called Sailor Man, one of my own right there. All right, moving on. I'd like to play uh, a tune I wrote for my good friend Chris Kahn's in Switzerland. Uh, again, I met him on one of my travels. Um, Chris and I have played together at many festivals, and he's been at my festival. I've been at his festival. He's become one of my best friends. He actually flew all the way to St. Louis to be in my wedding just for one night. Uh, so, Chris, if you're watching, this is for you. This is called Barrel House for Chris. <laughs> Time for just one more tonight. Um, I've kind of gotten a lot more into uh, to gospel style music. Uh, me and my wife play at church every Sunday, and I've kind of gotten more of that style in my in my bones. And uh, I've always loved Ray Charles and his his take on the the R and B and and blues and country side of the of, of gospel. So um, I wrote a song myself uh, based on kind of all those feelings and all those styles that I think I feel inside of me, and it's called preaching. So here we go. Thank you. 
church <laughs> well right. thank you chase that was just a great set so much variety and and beautiful thank you so much it's my first time to hear you and yeah, i am well, thrilled you. yeah I was, I was seeing you. yeah all right thank you so much all right thank you so much chase garrett y'all from iowa city iowa and and st louis too so um I'd like to take a moment to talk about two of the most beloved players who ever graced the Arches piano stage. Um, Tom Dooley, who was a co-founder and a, a, of the Arches piano stage and a mentor to the entire community that led to the creation of everything that we have now and in so many ways as a, a teacher, as a, a, a player and as a, a person. So um, I'll send love to to Tom Dooley and, and also to Bob Seeley. Uh, it's just odd not to have Bob Seeley here uh, in my mind. He's um, 
God, he's the the guy. He's the one. When I first saw him uh, play and I first met him, he totally rekindled my love for um, for Boogie Woogie. And, and he also at the same time made me realize that I was a total babe in the woods and he was the master. So I hope you're watching, Bob, and I love you and we all love you. And uh, thank you for everything. And uh, look at look at here, look at here. We got Rob Rio from the heartland to the west coast. We go, and uh, we're gonna find the boss of the boogie, Rob Rio. Rob is uh, in the Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame. He has played so much and in so many places. I think we need to let him hit the high notes for us. Hey, Marsha, so nice to see Hi. you. And so, so. <laughs> proud and, and happy to be part of this illustrious lineup. And Bob Seeley, yes, he is an American treasure. And we miss him. I hope that he's okay. It's uh, okay. And you know, it's nice to be here. Nice to see you, Marsha. How about Chase Garrett? Wow, man, he's Ooh. so great. Carl Sonny Leland, Ricky Nye. Oh man, all these players are so great. It's, an honor to be included into this lineup. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, tell us, I don't know, hit a, hit a, uh, I know you started out, um, you know, young, like so many, but I, you've just been everywhere. You've been a lot in Europe, right? Uh, well, you know, they love Boogie Woogie in Europe and France and Germany and Belgium. You know, just about every dude in Germany plays a little boogie woogie. They are so <laughs> in love with it. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, yes, the boogie. It is. It is so precise. The left hand is the machine. <laughs> <You know? laughs> really well, well, of course, it's Axel uh, Ringen. He is the main boogie woogie guy in Germany, and I was fortunate enough to do a tour with him several years ago uh, on, a, on a few occasions. I uh, uh, love being there because, you know, they love it and they clap on the one and the three. They do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. I was watching actually a film of um, Mead Lux Lewis, I think, and everybody was <laughs> was doing that. Uh -huh. he, he, he persisted, though. Um, well... Would you um, rock a while? Well, I'd be happy to rock a while, but you know, during the rehearsals, we were having technical difficulties here uh, with my vocal and with the piano, the way it was sounding. So I recorded something yesterday for you, for us. I hope that's uh, adequate enough. Uh, the first tune I was would like to do is a tune that me and you duetted on when we first met in Ventura, California, probably in the late 90s, early 2000s, at a little club called Nickelby's up on the second floor in Nickelby's. downtown. And we did a little duet on this, the Pine Top Boogie Woogie. Okay? All right. Well, roll them. Right. Do it. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's Here not funny. Let's Boogie Woogie. Yeah, thanks. 
try something from me, Lex Lewis. After all, he is an honored inductee this evening. Me, Lex Lewis's most famous tune, The Honky Tonk Train. Lex Lewis, Albert Ons, Pete Johnson, Pine Top Smith started it all. I'll mix them all together and I'll do it like this. <laughs>
I sent a sick picture. I guess you call that. Oh, here's one I did early this year when we first got into lockdown. It's dystopian out there. Lord, Lord, Lord. 
Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> Lord, Lord, where's my mask? Well, I'm going to, uh, while we get ready for our next uh, maestro, um, tell you a little bit more about the World Food Program. Uh, they deliver nutritious food to people in crisis situations. They do it for pennies. I love this kind of... Um, layout here. 50 cents for a daily ration, $18 for food for a week. So imagine if you drop a couple hundred dollars in the kitty, how much good you can do. But we're grateful for any old thing you want to give. Just think of all the money you're saving on cover charges right now, which is not the happiest thought, but the World Food Program will put your cover charge to very good use. So we are going to wrap up this wonderful evening with a truly international player who now lives right here in Austin. Born in France and raised in the United Kingdom, Henry Herbert has had a very interesting life. I read somewhere that you've been a stevedore and a boxer, which wow, makes yeah. me cringe when I think about your little fingers. I so wasn't very good. <laughs> I wasn't very good at either of those things. So I ended up being a <laughs> Well, I'm glad you had something to fall back on. <laughs> I That's did a lot of falling back as a boxer, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> well, you want to tell us a little bit about how you became the rock solid boogie player that you are today? Oh, thanks. Well, I um I first listened to Chuck Berry when I was very young. And Chuck Berry had some some fabulous piano in it. 
in the records. And, and I didn't even know it was piano at the time. I just knew that it was something amazing. And uh, then when I did get access to a piano, I started playing up the top end. And I thought, oh, that's the sound from the records. And then my dad showed me some, some boogie things. And, and I took it all from there and, and uh, just kept going with it. Well, cool. So um, how long have you been uh, in Austin? I've, I've seen you play here. It's great to go see you. And, uh, oh, and I got to tell you, I, don't, I, I want to tell you that I think this is a compliment in my mind, but your left hand is so like a, a jackhammer. It is so oh, solid thanks. and so steady that uh, I was just mesmerized <laughs> when I saw you. So Thank you I'm very really much. looking I, forward. I, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. I, I, uh, I've well, admired we, your music for a long time, so I, I would take yeah. that as a, as a great compliment. Thank you. And I, I've been in it's Austin probably, for nearly two years now. Okay. Cool, <laughs> Getting cool. on for two years. Well, I had one year of normality and then a year of, of not normality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. What a, what a time. Well, it's not the worst place you could be at a time like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Well, why don't you give us a, a, a sample here? Not just a sample. Why don't you rock us a while? All right, this here is called the 154 Boogie. <laughs> Five four boogie from, from uh, 
way back, I call it the 154 boogie because it's got the one, the five, and the four in it. <laughs> this here is called Groove, no Groove Number Two. called Sidetracking, it's inspired by uh, Otis Spann, one of my favorite, favorite uh, piano players of all. <laughs> Thank you. 
upstairs. <laughs> I'm just so happy to have a gig. <laughs> Uh, all right, this here is called called the uh, the slow blues. I, I did this on my my CD, Boogie Woogie Piano CD, and I I, I um, couldn't think of a title for it, so I just called it the slow blues. <laughs> This there is called the Guitar Boogie. Um, I had to invite my friend on the guitar. It's not here today, so I'm going to. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate the chance. To play. Thank you so much. All right. I'm sorry. I'm dancing. I'm busy. I'm dancing here. Can't you see? I'm Everyone dancing. Needs to dance right now. Everybody needs to get up and dance. <laughs> Uh, we're all shut inside. Let's all go up and dance indoors. <laughs> Calm down, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. That's that was Thank great. You. Thank you so much. Well, with that left hand, all those left hands, we're going to wrap up this evening. All those left hands with those patterns and those rhythms, and it's all boogie woogie, and it's all topped with a right hand that's like a five layer wedding cake. Fancy, counterpoint, polyrhythm, swing, jump and jab, five, four rhythms, minor key boogies, a boogie waltz that Henry just played. It's all boogie woogie. It'll make you dance. It'll make you smile until your face hurts. It's our grandparents' music, and it's the foundation of rock and roll. So thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate this American music. And thank you for supporting the good work of the World Food Project with your generous donations. And on behalf of the Arches Piano Stage and the Boogie Woogie Hall of Fame, the founders, Drs. Phil Lemming and Rob Cody, Big Joe Duskin, Tom Dooley, dear Ann Rabson, the production team, Jeff Harper and Greg and Brian Oliver, all the great players, I will say, stay safe, keep on boogieing, and we will see you next year under the arches with our fingers flying. Thank you and good night.